Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew nation. First off, let me give all praises to the Most High Ahaya, by Hashem, Yeshaya, Kodash, Wawa, for allowing us to see another Shabbat, the water Ahaya, for this Shabbat. All right, this evening's lesson is titled, The Chosen. Tonight, we will be covering three points of the chosen. Point one consists of who are the chosen. Point two, Israel was never cast away. And point three, the purpose of Israel. So that's what we're going to be covering this evening as the lesson is called the chosen. Now, according to Genesis chapter 48 and chapter 49, Jacob had 12 sons. These 12 sons later on became known as the 12 tribes of Israel, who are highly selected to bring salvation unto all the nations by teaching them the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, and also on how to receive the Shia in the earth. So this lesson, we're going to be going over who is the chosen. We're going to get some more clarity and some understanding. My name is Deacon Iba from Gather Another Elect Church, and I'm excited and I look forward to the most high, the most high, highest word to his people. So we're going to go into our foundational scripture, which is St. John chapter 15, verse 16. We're going into St. John chapter 15, verse 16. And make sure you get your pen, your paper, so you can jot down this information so you can have to read throughout the Shabbat and throughout the holy day that's approaching soon for the blowing of the trumpets. All right. So we're going into St. John chapter 15, verse 16. I'm going to start after verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, the Most High has chosen us, not the other way around. We did not choose the Most High. Let's, let's make that clear. The Most High chose us. He chose Israel. Okay? We are the royal bloodline of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, my brothers and sisters. So this lesson, once again, is called the Chosen. We are special. And we're going to go throughout the um, the verses that um, the Most High placed in me and the precepts. We're going to look at it, and you're going to understand why we are the Chosen. And it's going to be uh, without a shadow of a doubt that you are his chosen, okay? Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 through 9. We're going into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, and I'm going to read through 9. I'm going to start off at verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the most high power. The Most High, thy power, hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, my brother and sister, now you know that you are chosen of the Most High, if you didn't know. Now you know. The Most High has selected us. We are part of the royal bloodline of Jacob. We are chosen. Okay, we are holy people unto the Most High. Holy means set apart. We are special people unto himself. So the Most High has chosen us for, for him, for his glory. Okay, and it goes on and says, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deacon Ibar did not say that. The Most High word said this. We are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All right? Now, let's look at verse 7. The Most High did not set his love upon you, 
nor chose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. So Israel was not chosen because of our might, our, our, our strength. Okay? We was chosen because he loved us. All right? Let's look at verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath, what he has sworn unto your fathers. So the Most High swore the oath to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. All right? And we are descendants. And, we're, and Moses is speaking to um, Israel right now in the wilderness in Deuteronomy. So he's speaking to us and letting us know that we are chosen because the Most High has sworn to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? Have the Lord, have the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen. So that's when we was in Egypt. The Most High has brought us out of Egypt, okay? Brought us through the Red Sea and to the wilderness so we can be purged. All right, now let's, look at, let's continue on from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now let's go to verse 9. Know therefore that the Most High thy power, he is power, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. My brothers and sisters, you are chosen. You are special. All right? You are a holy people, Israel. We are a holy people, a special people chosen for the most highest use. All right? Let that resonate in your mind. Let that marinate in your spirit, in your heart, and in your mind. Because I know we give um, all types of negative feedback from the world, from other nations, you know, about the so-called black men or the um, the other so-called minorities throughout the world. You know, they put thumb downs on us in society. But no, as we go through the verses this evening, that you are the chosen. And no man can deny that or take that away from you. All right? Now let's go into our next reference. We're standing in the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 1. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, you will jot these precepts down for your edification so you can renew this in your spirit and speak this to yourself when you're going through tough times, when you're struggling. Know that you're the chosen. Know that you are selected before the foundations of the earth. The Most High has chosen you to be his people, to be his servant. Once again, we're standing in the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to chapter 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Most High commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Now, Moses is going over the covenant with us. So the Most High has made a covenant with Israel. That's why we're the special people. And that covenant was he has given us, the Most High gave to us, the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, okay? Now, let's go ahead. We're going to go into our next reference. We're going into the book of Exodus. We're going to go to chapter 19. We're going to read verses 3 to 8. And this point is called, Who are the Chosen? So keep that in mind. We're going over the verses and precepts so you can have clarity of who are the Chosen. So now you have these precepts to go with that. So if somebody questions you, who are you? Why you say you Israel? You're black. You're um, African American. Nah, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. So now you have the precepts, and we're going to go throughout this evening getting those precepts, so you can let the people know who you are through the precepts, through these verses, through His holy scriptures. All right. So Exodus chapter 19. We're going to start at verses three. We're going to read to verses eight. I'm going to start at verse 3. And Moses went up unto heaven, and the Most High called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and to tell the children of Israel. Verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, 
and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought unto Shalaki and brought you unto myself. So you see here the most high is you see the most high speaking to Moses and letting us know what, what he has done for us. Now let's go to verse five. Now therefore if ye will obey my voice Shalaki verse five. Now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now, in verse 5, there's a condition, my brothers and sisters, because as you all know, Israel did fall off. Israel did not keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And we'll get into that as we go continue on. So the Most High is letting us know. It was a condition, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, what is the covenant? The law, statutes, and the commandments. That was given to Israel to preach to the nations. The oracles were given to Israel. The oracles of the law, statutes, and the commandments. All right? Then you shall be a peculiar treasure. We're chosen, my, my brother says, a peculiar treasure. That peculiar, that's that unique. You know, we're going to stand out. That's why we're chosen. The Most High chose us. A peculiar treasure unto me, unto the Most High, my brother says this, Above all people. So we're, the Most High has picked us out of all the nations on the face of the earth. That's an honor, my brothers and sisters. For all the earth is mine. The Most High is letting us know. Verse 6, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Yes, my brothers, you are priests. You are holy priests to the Most High. You are a kingdom of priests. Israel is kingdom of priests and, and holy nation. Once again, that holy that's set apart for the Most High's use. We are a nation that's set apart only for the Most High. There are the words, so like these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So these were the commandments that the Most High has given to Moses to give to us. Let's look at verse 7. And Moses came and called the elders, Shalaki. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Most High commanded him. Verse 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Most High has spoken, we will do. So, my brothers and sisters, our, four, our forefathers made the covenant. They, got, they received the oracles of the Most High, and our, forf- and our forefather said, all that the Most High has spoken, we will do. So we were in agreement. We made a covenant with the Most High. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Most High. So Moses went back to the Most High and said, Israel, agree. Now we're going to look at that, what happened. We're going into the book of Deuteronomy because we made a vow to the Most High. That covenant was made, and our forefathers agreed. Now, there were conditions to this covenant that we made with the Most High. Okay? Now, we're going into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Now, if you read, on your time, you can read all the 28, but I'm just going to skip around the cover just a few verses. Now, in Deuteronomy, chapters 1 through 14, the blessings for for obedience. If Israel would have kept the the law and did as and did as the Most High commanded our forefathers to do, we would have received the blessings. We would we have right now been above all nations. But our forefathers did not keep the law, statutes, and the commandments. Now, verses one, I mean Shalaki, verses fifteen through sixty eight is for disobedience. We disobeyed. We did not keep the Most High commandments. And so that's when we fell away. But the Most High still kept his covenant with us. We still received curses, and we're going to read some of that. Um, we're, going to, we're going to start at verse 45. And it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. 
because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Most High thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Now, my brothers and sisters, the reason why I'm covering these curses is because, once again, this lesson is called the chosen, but you don't know that you're chosen if you don't know the Most High's word that's on you. Okay, now, the Most High put this in his word that this curses are an indicator of his people. And we're going to look at verse 46 so you can see that. Verse 46 says, And they shall be a poverty for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Now, my brothers and sisters, now you understand that this is the sign of who are the Most High's chosen. Now, that sounds crazy to the mind, don't it? Well, how can you be chosen if you get all these curses? It don't make no sense to the natural mind. But the Most High always has a plan. <laughs> Verse 47, because thou servest not the Most High thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Verse 48, therefore shalt thy serve thy enemies, which the Most High shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, once again, this is to identify who the chosen who Israel is in the earth, my brothers and sisters. So these curses apply to you. You are the chosen. I know it's not crazy to the corner of mine, but this is the most high's word. You are the chosen. And now you understand why, though. Our forefathers did not keep the, the Most High law, statutes, and the commandments when we are punished. But we're going to see this evening that the Most High is still going to bring us out, and he's still going to use his chosen people to bring salvation into the earth. All right. So we're going to go now. We're going to go to the book of Amos, chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. That's the book of Amos, chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 1. Hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, verse 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. My brothers, my brothers and sisters, the Most High does not deal with no other nations. It's clear right here. It says he has only known Israel. He doesn't deal with no other nations. Esau, the Hamites, the seed of um, Japheth, he doesn't deal with them. He only knows Israel. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, yes, we're being punished. But this is to identify who the chosen are. Verse 3, and this is why, can two walk together except they be agreed? So since we did not keep the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High, we're being punished. And guess what? You are still the chosen of the Most High. All right, now we're going into the book of Jeremiah. We're going to go to chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 5. And this is so you'll know why you was chosen before the foundations of the earth. And we're going to look at an example of the prophet Jeremiah. The Most High has chosen Jeremiah before the foundations of the earth. So that's Jeremiah chapter 1. We're going to read verse 5. Verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. All praise to the Most High. Did y'all hear that, my brothers and sisters? Before you was even in the womb, the Most High formed thee. He laid your whole life out already. It's already planned. Yes, we are the chosen. It's already planned. I knew thee. The Most High knew us. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, before we came out of our mother's womb, we already had a sign. It goes on and says, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So I'm breaking this out so you can have an understanding that 
The Most High has sanctified thee. He already gave you the blessings, okay? He already put his oracles in you. And then it goes on and says, and I ordain thee. Not man. Man did not choose us. Man, man cannot choose us. The Most High chose us before the foundations of the earth. All right. Now, let's go to our next reference. We're going into the book of Psalms. Now, once again, the first point is called, Who are the Chosen? So then we're going over those precepts under who are the chosen. Now, we're looking at the book of Psalms, 147. We're going to start at verse 19. Once again, the book of Psalms, 147. We're going to start at verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. The Most High only deals with Israel, my brothers and sisters. Jacob, that's the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you're not sure about the 12 tribes, you can, like I said earlier, go to Genesis chapter 48 and Genesis chapter 49. You'll get some understanding of who's the chosen. Okay, my brothers and sisters? Because the most I said in his word, he's going to wake us up. According to also in Baruch chapter 2, verses 27 through 35, the most, the most I said, he will wake Israel up in our captivity. So wherever Israel is at in our captivity, he's putting that spirit to awaken us. Just like it also in the book of Ezekiel, the dry bones. We are those dry bones in the valley. The Most High is waking us up throughout the world because he's going to use Israel, the 12 tribes, in the last days. So we are the chosen, my brothers and sisters. I'm excited right now. This is a blessing. All right. So let's go to verse 20. I'll make sure like back to 19. So the most I only showed his word to Jacob, like I said earlier, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So only Jacob can bring the clarity and the understanding of his word. No other nation. So that's why the word is in the state that it's in now. That's why you have all these knockoffs and this Christianity, these false doctrines throughout the earth. You got Gentiles that have not been properly taught by Israelites. That's in the truth. Okay? So they don't have no understanding of the Most High's Word. So that's why they don't understand grace. They don't understand the law. And they're preaching, you know, throughout the earth. And they're, they're preaching the false doctrine, according to Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. So the Most High has made it clearly. His law of statutes goes to Jacob, and, and it must be preached through Jacob. No other nation can bring the clarity. Now, let, let me back that up with, the, with another verse. Verse 20, he hath not dealt so with any nation. So all this, I'm a spiritual Israelite, and, you know, um, I'm now spiritually awakened, and, you know, these Gentiles and, and Edomites think they can just, you know, preach the most high word and they're getting it wrong. You got one point six plus billion Christians on the face of the earth. And and the majority of them don't know what sin is. They do not know the definition of sin. And the sin is the transgression of the law. And and the majority of Christians can't tell you what sin is. So how are they going to preach salvation? You don't know where you err. You don't know where you fail. Sin is the transgression of the law, according to 1 John. And these, and these uh, Edomites and Gentiles don't understand that. But they talk about grace. You don't understand grace if you don't know sin. So that's why you have this chaos throughout, this misinterpretation of, the, of uh, Paul's writings. Because even Peter... Say it's, it's hard to the unlearned to understand Paul's writings. So that's why we have to go to Israel like to get their understanding according to the scriptures that I'm going over right now. All right. So let's go. Now we're going into the book of Revelation, chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 9. And we're going to see that the Most High is letting Israel know who we are. He's letting us know that we're the chosen. And he's going to give uh, some indications 
of his people. And it's going to sound crazy. How the word can, what I'm about to read, we already looked at the curses and you're chosen. That don't make no sense to the natural carnal mind. The wisdom of this word don't understand that. They, it makes no sense. But the Most High always has a plan. Okay, let's look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Now, the Most High speaking to Israel. Let's look at this, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So the Most High is letting us know he knows what we're going through. He knows that we're being punished right now. He knows that we're in captivity. He said poverty. And if you read the curses, 15 verses, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 68, you're going to see that it's poverty. That's one of the curses. Tribulation also. So the Most High knows our works. He knows what we're going through. Now, check this out. But thou art rich. The Most High says we are rich. Why are we rich, Israel? Because he has given us his oracles. That's why we're rich, because the law is in us. The statutes and his commandments is in us. That's why we're rich. And I know the blasphemy of them would say they are Jews. So he already knows the imposters that's over there in Israel right now, according to the scriptures. The Mosai already knows that they're faking, they're shaking. They're not us. They're not the chosen. And are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. That's who those imposters are in Israel right now, according to the scriptures, according to Most High, the Most High's word. They are imposters. They are the synagogues of Satan. So, yes, my brothers and sisters, you are the chosen. Now, let's get some more clarity. Let's go to, to the book of Zechariah. Now, I'm going to be hopping around a lot because I want you to get familiar with the whole book, the volume of the book that the Most High has given us because the oracles are in us. So we have to know the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Apocrypha. We have to know his word completely. We have to study. We have to get his word in us. So we're going to be going through a lot of chapters and verses throughout his word. So, Zechariah chapter 2, we're going to go to verse 8. For thus saith the Most High of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations, which spoil you. So he, this is us going into captivity, okay? We're being spoiled. We're being taken advantage of. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Yes, my brothers and sisters of Israel, you are the apple of the Most High's eye. You're dear and special to him. That's why we're the chosen. So when you look in the mirror and you wake up in the morning, you are the apple of the Most High's eye. Know that. All right. I'll pray this to the Most High, Ahaya. Now, we're going to go into the Apocrypha. That's your red book. That's the 14 missing books. The Apocrypha means, in Greek, the hidden, because they took this out of the original 1611 King James Version. And in Greek, the Apocrypha means hidden. The, the elite hid it from us purposely. The Roman Catholic Church hid it from us purposely. So in your Apocrypha, authorized King James Version, we're going into Second Ezra, chapter 6, and we're going to start off at verse 54. Now I'm going to bring this out so you can see why the Most High has chose us. Okay? We're going to start out with verse 54 of Second Ezra, chapter 6, my brothers and sisters. And I'll start off at verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest, Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Okay, so that we understand that we all came from Adam, but this is specifically us. This is Second Ezra speaking to the Most High, because 
Ezra's had a lot of questions that he's asking the Most High. Why are we going through this? Why Israel have to go through this? So he's asking the Most High questions, and we're going to see the questions that Ezra was asking the Most High. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. You see, so Ezra is asking the Most High. He's saying, the Most High, we are, we are, we are His chosen. Okay. And so why are we going through this? And we're going to look at that right now in verse 2, I mean, verse 55. All this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So now, as you see here that we're the chosen. The world is made for Israel, my brothers and sisters. And we're going to see that right now, verse 56. As for the other people which also come of Adam, not from Jacob, but from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Now, let me bring clarity to this. The Most High is not saying that he doesn't have salvation for the other nations, Okay. He's saying that they're not according to the chosen, okay? The Most High selected us. So when it comes to the chosen, this is how the Most High sees the other nations. Not saying they're not going to receive salvation. They are if they keep the law, statutes, and commandments and receive your shaya. But the Most High is also letting us know when it comes to us, the chosen, this is how the Most High sees the other nations because they did not want to do nothing with of the Most High, okay? Now, let's go ahead to um, verse 57. And now, O the Most High, behold, these heathens. So this is what the Most High calls, you know, these, the, other, the other nations. He calls them heathens because they don't keep the law, statutes, and the commandments. That's the Gentiles, okay? That's the other nations. So he says, and now, O the Most High, behold, these heathens which have ever been reputed as nothing hath begun to be lords over us and to devour us. So now you see that Ezra is bringing it up that we, like as I shared with us earlier, we went into captivity. We was punished. And so the Most High has placed the other nations, the Gentile, are over Israel. Okay? Let's look at the next verse. But we thy people whom thou hast called Thy firstborn. So now he's letting the most high is let we are the firstborn, we are the chosen. Okay? But we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, the only begotten, my brothers and sisters. Okay, the most high chose Israel, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. So now you see Ezra is saying, We're the chosen, but we're being, we're going through punishment. We're going through captivity. Okay, we're being put in the hands of our enemies. And let's look at the next verse. If the word now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So, like I said, Ezra's had a lot of questions. But through these questions, I brought these verses out so you can see why we're the chosen. And so you can understand that. And you can see it throughout the verses that you're the chosen. The Most High has chosen us. Even though we're in captivity, even though we're going through, we're poverty stricken right now, the Most High, we are still his chosen. We are still his priests, my brothers and sisters. We are his kingdom of priests. This nation, Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, we still belong to the Most High. And he's going to use us. He's using us now. All right. Now, let's go on to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. And when I, I'm bringing this out so you're going to see how the Most High is going to bring his chosen people through. Even though we're in captivity, the Most High is going to bring his chosen through. Okay? So Isaiah, chapter 43, and we're going to start at verse 1. But now, thus said the Most High that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, for not, for I have redeemed thee, 
I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Yes, we are the chosen, my brothers and sisters. He called us by our name. Verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall thy flame kindle upon thee. The Most High is with us, Israel, Yasharala. The Most High is with us. Listen to his word. Verse 3, for I am the Most High, thy power, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Verse 4, since thou was precious in my sight, Thou hast been honorable. Do you hear that, my brothers and sisters? And I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. So, my brothers and sisters, what you think is against you is going to be for us, according to the Most High's word. What looks like um, opposition, what looks like turmoil, is going to be for us. Thy foot, what the, what the scripture says, your enemies will be what? Our footstool. All right, let's go to verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. So this is most High letting us know in the last days, we're, he's bringing Israel together again. He's bringing the 12 tribes together. All right, verse 6. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Verse 7, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have forged him, yea, I have made him. So Israel, even in our captivity, the Most High has not forsaken us. He is with us, and he's going to bring us through, through our tribulations, through our captivity. He's going to bring the nation together once again. That's why I want you to read Genesis 48 and 49, because those are the prophecies to identify Israel. Okay? Now, that was the conclusion of my first point, who are the chosen. Now we're going to go into my second point. Israel was never cast away. Now, I'm breaking this point out because you hear throughout the Christian churches, oh, it's a new thing. It's now the spiritual Israelites, they call themselves. And you don't hear nothing about the Torah tribes. You got the pork chop eating pastors and preachers come up. They never say anything about the Torah tribes of Israel. They never say anything about the most high special people, his chosen people. Why is that? The most high scripture said, as the scripture said, today is today, yesterday, and forever. So why are they not bringing up the 12 tribes of Israel as if they're cast away? And that tells you that too. Oh, Israel doesn't exist no more. Oh, we're not under the law no more because they're not, they have not been taught properly by Israelites. So that's what I said. When you're not taught by the chosen, according to his word, you're going to have what you have now in the earth. This gospel is another gospel, according to the scriptures. And that's why you have all these abominable houses. You have our people in these abominable houses. And they're not keeping the law, standards, and the commandments. And, they, and these, these, so these Christian pastors tell our people, Israel, our chosen, to don't keep the laws, that the laws are done away with. So. I'm going over these verses so you, we can have understanding and clarity that Israel was never cast in weight. Okay? Now, we're going to the, my first reference and my second point, Jeremiah chapter 31. And we're, going to, we're going to see clearly that Israel is still here according to the Most High, a highest word. Israel never left. Israel is here in the earth now according to scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 31 we're going to verse 35. 
Verse 35, thus saith the Most High, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordering of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea, when the waves thereof roar. The Most High of hosts is his name. The Most High of hosts is his name. All right, verse 36. Now, as I read verse 36, you're going to see that Israel is still on the earth. Verse 36. Now, actually, the Most High is also challenging Esau and all the other, all the other Gentile nations a challenge. Verse 36. If those ordinance depart from before me, saith the Most High, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So, my Christians throughout the earth, if Israel is done away with, these ordinance, the sun would not be no more, the moon won't be no more. If Israel is done away with, according to scriptures, let's look at verse 37. Thus saith the Most High, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth search out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Most High. So, to all Esau and all the Gentile nations throughout the earth, if there is no more Israel, if there is no more 12 tribes of Israel in the earth, these ordinance, you would not, we would not have a sun, we would not have a moon, and man would have measured heaven and to the bottom, to the beneath of the earth. Meaning he has to go through the ocean. And mankind don't even have equipment to go that deep. From, from doing my study, 90% of the sea has not even been discovered. Only 10%. Hmm. Israel is still on the earth. The chosen is still in the earth, my brothers and sisters. All right. Now, we're going into Romans. Chapter 3, we're going to start out verse 1. And once again, my brothers and sisters, the name of this lesson titled this evening is The Chosen. All right. Romans chapter 3, we're going to start at verses 1 through 4. We're going to get some more clarity on that Israel is not cast away and was never cast away. All right. Verse 3 of Romans chapter 3, we're going to go to verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, you hear this all the time, Christians say, oh, there's no, there's no Jew or Gentile when it comes to Christ. And in, in, the, in the way they're correct, because when it comes to salvation, you receive Christ and keep the law, and commandments, yes, you can receive salvation. It doesn't matter what you are. Now, we're going to go further into this so we can have clarity of that. Verse 2, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Ahia. So this would separate us from all the other nations because the oracles was given to Israel and no other nations on the face of the earth. So that's what makes us special according to Scripture. That's what makes us the chosen. This is what gives us the advantage of all the other nations. So when you see that Christian talking about, uh, it's no Jew or Greek, you take them to this chapter, Romans chapter 3, and you go through them in verse 1, and they're, they're, they're still fighting the truth and nail after, after you even show them the, the verses. But just hold on to his word, okay? Now, let's look at verse 4. Um, so like, let's look at verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Now, that goes back to your Christians and all the other nations that don't want to believe that Israel is the chosen and don't, don't want to believe that the Most High has chosen Israel. It doesn't matter, according to verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Ahijah with effect? <laughs> verse 4, Ahijah forbid, yea, 
Let Ahia be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightiest be justified in thy sayings, and mighty is overcome when thou art judged. So, I don't care what no Christian says about, no, Israel is not the chosen, there's no more Israel. The scripture says different. And the scripture also makes a distinction of who Israel and why Israel is the chosen. Because the oracles was given to us. So when you have a Christian come to you about the laws done away with and there's no more Israel, you take them to these verses. That's why I pray that you write these verses down. All right. And let's stay in Romans. We're going to go to chapter 11. And also, these are the chapters that are not preached in the Christian churches. They're not going to come out of Romans chapter 11 or Romans chapter 3. So know that. So Romans, stay in the book of Romans. We're going to chapter 11. We're going to get some more clarity that Israel was never cast away, according to the scriptures. We're still here in the earth. <laughs> All right, Romans chapter 11, we're going to start out with verse 1. I say then, has Ahijah cast away his people? Ahijah forbid. So Israel was never cast away. So every time you hear Christians say, oh, it's a new spiritual Israelite, you take them to these chapters, these verses. Israel was never cast away. For I also am an Israelite. Now, this is Paul speaking. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul is letting you know off the top that he's an Israelite that he's part of the 12 tribes of Israel with a surety, without no hesitation. All right, verse 2. Ahijah have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Woe ye not what the scripture said of Elias, how he maketh intercession to Ahijah against Israel, saying, and then it goes on into uh, in verse 3 and so on about um, that the Most High has 7,000 in the earth because Elijah was, you know, complaining, and Elijah thought he was alone. But the Most High told Elijah that I still have 7,000 men that did not bow. They need to bail or to Satan. Okay, so we don't, we don't have to go into that, but I just want to bring verses 1 to 2 out so you'll know that Israel is not cast away. Us chosen, we're still here in the earth. All right. So we're going to skip down to verse 11 of Romans chapter 11, and you're going to see that we are the natural branches of Israel, my brothers and sisters. We are the natural branch, and the most I told the nations and the Gentiles not to boast against the natural branches, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, his chosen. And if you boast and come against Israel, the most I is going to deal with you. And we're going to look at that in these verses. Romans chapter 11, we're going to stay in 11, we're going to verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they shall fall? Now, Paul's bringing this out to let us know that even though Israel stumbled, meaning even though we did not keep the law, statutes, and commandments of forefathers, the Most High did not do us away. We're not done away. And you have, that's why you hear these Christians and these other nations preaching this gospel in the earth that Israel's done away with. And you, and, and you hear this from Jehovah Witnesses that um, all the records of Israel was burnt. That's why there's no more Israel. They got burnt and destroyed by the Roman Empire. You're going to hear that. That's what Jehovah Witnesses will say. And I heard them say that to me. Oh, we can't find their records no more. The Romans burnt it all up. There's no more Israel. How do you know they're still here? This is what they tell me. And it, you know, so that's why we got to stay in the scriptures, my brothers and sisters, okay? So we're not done away with. Yes, we stumble. But the scripture goes on and says that they should fall, meaning should we be destroyed because we stumble? No. The most I still is using us, okay? Let's look at that. A higher forbid. So the most I kept his oath with Israel. After we fell, he kept his oath. 
Now, he punished us, but he still, we still have his oracles in us. He didn't take that away from us, okay? He took the salvation away, which is our riches, and we're going to look at that right now. But rather through their fall, their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles. So that fall salvation is the riches that Israel had when he was ruling the earth. Under King Solomon, under King David, we have riches. Okay? So the, those riches now went to the Gentiles. That's why Esau is in power now, because the riches went to Esau and the Gentiles, the nations. And they conjured together, and I believe it's Psalms 83, they came together uh, to promote, to come against Israel. Okay? So they took our riches. And that's what that fall of salvation means, okay? It says, it's coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So the fact that all the other nations got our riches, that was to provoke us so we can get back to the Most High and get things in order. Because no nation wants to go through poverty and through uh, persecution. I mean, not persecution, but through poverty. No nation does. So the most high, you know, we was, we're being provoked to jealousy. Verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their footage. So that's what happened, and it's to provoke us. The Esau and the other nations are rich off for of Israel. The only reason why they are where they are now in the earth is because Israel fell away from the law, statutes, and the commandments. Did not keep the law, our forefathers. So the Most High punished us and stripped us of our, of our riches and gave it to the other nations, okay? Now let's get down to verse 16. And here the Most High is let, letting the Esau and the, and the um, other nations know, don't boast. Now that you receive salvation, meaning... Um, that you can receive Christ, and if you keep the law, says and commandments, don't boast and say Israel is done away with. Because if you do, this is what's going to happen to these nations. And Esau, okay, verse 16. For if, for if the first fruit be holy, the love is also holy. It's talking about us, Israel. We're the first love. We're the first fruit. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay, verse 17, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, work crack, graft in among them. So this is the Gentiles being grafted into the, the tree. Okay, and with them partakes of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Verse 18, Boast not against the branches. So the Most High is telling um, the other nations, don't boast it against Israel. Don't put Israel down. Even though you see us in the condition that we're in now, don't put your feet on us. Okay? It's like that old, that cliche you hear, um, don't knock a man, don't kick a man after he's already down. So Esau's kicking us and the other nations are kicking us when we're down. The Most High said, don't do that in verse 18. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but thou root, so like, but the root deep. Okay? So the Most High is, is telling these other nations, don't boast against the root. I mean, don't boast against the branches. You're not the branches. So why you, you're not better than the branches. Don't boast. Verse 19, that will say then, the branches were broken off. That's that. I'm a spiritual Israelite. The um, Israel is done away with. The law is no more. Okay? <laughs> I'm bringing it out in these verses. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. You hear that? So the Gentiles is, is boasting now. He's saying, don't boast. I'm grafted in now because Israel fell. They're sticking out their chest. The Most High said, don't do that. Okay, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. So the Most High is 
you know, the most is, is explaining to, you know, to the nations, don't boast, okay? Because the most is speaking through Paul, okay? And he's telling uh, the Gentiles, don't boast, okay? Yes, don't boast because, you know, Israel had unbelief in Christ. Some, some of Israel did not want to receive Christ, okay? And some of Israel didn't want to keep the law, statutes, and the commandments. Nevertheless, the Most High said, don't boast against them, okay? Because you're standing by faith. And, it, and he goes on and says, be not high-minded. Don't think you're better than Israel. And that's why you had the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they walk around like they're the church. You know, these Gentiles, the Pope, you know, Edomite, some about all kind of crazy stuff, just wickedness. All right? Let's look at verse 21. For if a high is spared not the natural branches, because look what he did to Israel, and we're his apple of his eye, he still sent us through punishment, okay? He still put our enemies against us in captivity, all right? So he's letting the Gentiles and Esau know, verse 21, for if a high is spared not the natural branches, take heed, these he also spared not thee. Verse 22, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Ahia on them which fail severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. So the Most High already warned Esau and the other nations what's going to happen if they boast against us. So, my brother and sister, Israel is still in the earth. We are still the chosen, and we was never cast away. And that's my second point, okay? Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and let's go to verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye would, Shalaki, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness is part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become Shalaki. Gentiles become in. Verse twenty six. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, talking about Yeshua, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse twenty seven. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Now, my brothers and sisters, do you understand why you're the chosen? Now you understand that we never was cast away, according to scriptures. So when you hear this Israelite um, madness from these Christian abominable houses, these Christian churches, you take them to Romans chapter 3 and Romans 11, okay? All right. Now, let's get some more clarity of us never being cast away. We're going into St. John, chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 27. Once again, St. John, chapter 10, verse 27. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. You hear that, my brothers and sisters? This is for the chosen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out. My Father's hand. We are the chosen, Israel. So now you understand that we was never cast away. The Most High said in his word, no man is able to pluck them out of my hand, my Father's hand, my brothers and sisters. All right. So that concludes my second point of Israel was never cast away, my brothers and sisters. So we're going to my third point. And it's called the purpose of the chosen, my brothers and sisters. All right. 
We're going into the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51. We're going to start out in verse 19. Now, once again, I pray my brothers and sisters, you write these precepts down so you can have understanding. So when that Christian comes into your pathway and they talk about the law is done away with, you got your, your chapters and your precepts to back up his holy word. All right. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. He's talking about the other nations. It's not like the other nations, my brothers and sisters. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The most high of hosts is his name. The most high of higher of hosts is his name. All right. So that's verse 19. So now you have some clarity of the purpose of the chosen. Let's look at verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So this is the purpose of the chosen, my brothers and sisters. The most I was going to use Israel to minister to the nations, and we're going to destroy the kingdom if they're wicked, meaning we're going to preach the gospel to them. Okay, we're going to tear down their sin, sinful activities in their nations. Okay, those nations that are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, the most I'm going to use Israel to bring the word to them as a witness. So on Judgment Day, they can't say they did not hear the Most High's word. So the Most High is going to use Israel in the last days. All right, let's go into the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. We're going to look at verses 5 and 6. Once again, that's the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 5 and 6. Verse 5. And now, said the Most High, that for it me from the womb to be his servant. So the Most High speaking to Isaiah, okay, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, so we was already... Um, scattered, okay, during Isaiah, the prophet's time. And the Most High birth, um, is breaking Isaiah as a prophet, and he's telling Isaiah, this is your assignment, okay? Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Most High, and my power shall be my strength, okay? So the Most High is, is, is waking up Isaiah and letting Isaiah know this is your assignment. You are to gather Israel. You are to bring Jacob again to him, to the Most High. Okay? Verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe, the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. So this is Israel's purpose, my brothers and sisters. This is the chosen's purpose. We have to wake up Israel. We have to wake up the dry bones in Ezekiel. That's us. That's the whole house of Israel. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. That's our job. That's our purpose as the chosen, my brothers and sisters. Okay? Let's continue in verse 6. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So, my brothers and sisters, you got, you got Hebrew camps out there that's preaching only Israel's going to be saved. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says he uses, he, would use, he is using us, Israel, to be a light to the Gentiles also. They will have salvation through us as we preach to them, as they keep the law, statutes, and the commandments and receive Messiah. They also will come into the kingdom according to scriptures. Let's read that again. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. If you're not sure who the Gentiles are, my brothers and sisters, go to Genesis chapter 10, verse 5. It'll tell you who the Gentiles are. That's the other nations that are outside of Israel. They also receive salvation if they keep the law statutes and the commandments. 
and receive your shina. Okay? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that they may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. All right. Now let's get some more clarity. We're going into Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start after verses 13. We're going to read through 16. And this, this third point is called the purpose of the chosen. So that's the book of Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 13. This is your purpose, Israel. Verse 13, because Yeshua was speaking to the 12 disciples. So you have some Christians who were bringing here. No, Yeshua was speaking to Israel. He wasn't speaking to the nations. He wasn't speaking to Esau. He was speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? That was the disciples. They were Israelites. All right. Verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his Savior, where will shall it be salted? So this is the importance of us, Israel, as being the chosen. We bring flavor to the earth. Why? Because we have the law, statutes, and the commandments. I said flavor because salt is flavor. We bring flavor to the earth. We bring the laws of the Most High, his oracles. We bring it to the nations. That's why we're the chosen. All right? It is their hints good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. So Israel, we are the light to the nations. Why are we the light? Because the Most High's law is in us. The Most High's oracle is in us, my chosen people. That's why we are the light. All right. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So this is our job, Israel. We are to preach his law, statutes, and his commandments and be a light unto these nations and the earth. And I'll, of course, start off with Israel to wake our people up so we can go to the nations and the numbers, all right? Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So this is why you're the chosen, Israel. Be that light unto the nations. All right. Now, as being that light, this is what we are to say. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 1, this is how you be the light, my brothers and sisters, to the earth and to the other nations and also Israel. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. So that's what we are to preach, Israel. We are to wake Jacob up. We are to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. We are to sound like a trumpet and wake our people up. We are to show our people their transgressions. We are to show our people our sins. Sin is a transgression of the law. So when you break the law, you sin. That's what sin is. You break the law. So that's our job, to wake up Israel. All right. Now, let's go into Matthew chapter 28. We're going to go to verses 18 and 20. This is, once again, the third point is called the purpose of the chosen. And the lesson this evening is called the chosen. All right. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to start at verse 18. This is our purpose, Israel. Yasharala. Verse 18. And Yashadah came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 16, I mean, Shalaki, verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Ahiah, and of the Son, Yeshua, and of the Holy Spirit, Kodesh Wabu Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So be it. So, my brothers and sisters, this is the purpose of us chosen. This is what we are to do. Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. What are we to teach you, my chosen people, Israel? We are to teach them the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. And once we do that, then we are to baptize them. We are to submerge them under water because the Shiloh was baptized. He is our example. Okay? The scripture says, whatsoever we observe. What did the 12 disciples observe? They said the Shiloh was baptized. Because you're going to have a lot of other um, Hebrew camps that don't baptize. They don't submerge you under water. The Shiloh was that example. That's what baptizing we are to submerge you under water to be baptized, renew you. We are, we are to follow Christ's example. All right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we are to do, Israel. That's our purpose, to teach all nations the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. All right. Now, I'm not going to go into it, but you can read these on your own. It also talks about the purpose of of the chosen, Israel, Revelation chapter 7, and also Revelation chapter 14. It explains um, Israel's purpose in the last days, okay? All right. I have a few more chapters. I'm going to read out. I'm going to um, read Jeremiah. Let's see. Chapter 30. And I'm going to start at Verse 10. You can read chapter 30 on your own, my brothers and sisters, when you get time. And I want you to focus in on verses 11 through 24 because it's going to talk about Israel complaining and why we went through our um, tribulations and our, our punishment. But the Most High is going to deliver us and bring us out and put us in our land. Okay? So I'm going to start at verse 10. Okay? Of Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 10. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Most High. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. So the Most High is going to take us out of the daughter of Babylon. We're going out of this captivity. He's going to deliver us. And Jacob shall return. We're going back to our land, Israel. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. So that's just more clarity that the people that claim to be us, that's over there, they are afraid, they're not quiet, and they're not at rest. (laughs) You got war going over there right now. So that's just another indicator that those are not us. That is not Israel. That is not Yasserala. Those are imposters. And as the scripture said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, those imposters that's in Israel now is the synagogue of Satan. All right. And this is my last chapter for this evening. And I'm going into Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. I'm going to start at verse 13 in Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Ahiah and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14, for Ahiah shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, my brothers and sisters, this is the third point, and the third point is called the purpose of the chosen. And I pray that, my brothers and sisters, you you receive edification of his word this evening, and that now you know without with the surety that you are his chosen. You are special to the Most High. His oracles are in you. So put his word in you, my brothers and sisters, so they can stay in you. All right? And I pray that this is edifying to the body, and I want to give all praise to the, and honor to the Most High Ahijah, by his shim, his shida, kodesh wa wa
for his word, and I yield.